All right, welcome back. In this video, we're just going over how to solve kinetic pulley problems, and the setup that we're looking at right now is referred to as an Atwood machine. So what's the case where we have one pulley supporting two different masses, and the pulley is massless or inertialess? And basically all you need to know about that is it just means that the tension will be the same on either side of it, and we don't have to worry about any of the rigid body uh, rotations or mechanics that go into that. It's a simplification uh, that we're just going to deal with for the purposes of uh, learning basic kinetics. So to solve these problems, all we have to do is apply Newton's second law, which is the sum of forces is equal to mass times acceleration. We have to apply this separately for each mass and consider all of the forces that are acting on each of those masses. So in this case, it is just tension and the weight of each block. So if we drew a free body diagram, we have M1, and we're going to have tension pulling up, and we're going to have its weight acting down. And if we drew mass 2, it has the same tension pulling up on it, because tension is the same in that cord with the inertialist pulley, and we're going to have its weight pulling down. Let's call that weight 2 and weight 1. Now similar to the last video where we identified the direction of acceleration as the positive direction that we're going to be considering, we're going to do that for each mass. So if mass 1, let's say, is 10 kilograms, and mass 2 is 15 kilograms, then mass 1 is definitely going to be raised up and mass 2 is definitely going to be lowered down. There's no question about it. So let's identify the direction of acceleration for each of them as the direction they're actually going. So mass 1, acceleration is going to be going up, and for mass 2, acceleration is going to be going down. Notice that tension is the same for both of them, and acceleration is also going to have the same magnitude. So yeah, as long as we set acceleration in the direction of motion, that's going to be our positive direction when we're what, for what we're considering in the sum of force expressions. And then we're just going to solve each one separately, but kind of simultaneously, and we're going to use that connection of tension and acceleration. Um, but one of those unknowns, T and A, is going to drop out along the way, and we'll come back and solve it after. So we can actually solve this. We know that the mass is 10 kilograms, 10 kg, mass one, and mass two is 15 kg. Then weight 1 is just 10 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. That gives us 98.1 newtons. And weight 2 is just 15 kilograms times 9.81. That's going to be 147.15 newtons. So let's do the force balance for the first one. We're going to take the sum of forces equal to mass of that block times the acceleration of that block. We're going to be considering up to be the positive direction for acceleration and for our force balance. So we have, in this case, we're going to have tension minus weight one is equal to mass one times acceleration. Let's put tension on one side and everything else on the other side. So we have tension is equal to M1A plus W. We can fill out these values because we have them for now. We can say that tension is equal to mass one, which is 10 kilograms times A plus 98.1 newtons. Okay, let's pause there and we'll go over to the other diagram and do the same thing. We're going to take the sum of forces is equal to mass times acceleration. In this case, we know the motion is downward, the acceleration is downward, so we're taking down as the positive direction for our sum of forces and for our acceleration. So in that case, when we look at this, W2 is in the positive direction of down, so it is W2 minus T, because T is opposite the positive direction, equals to M2A. All right, again, let's isolate for T, so we'll bring T onto the other side. We're gonna have um, T is equal to W2 minus M2A. And we can fill those in because we know them mostly. That's going to be W2, 147.15 newtons minus 15 kilograms times A. All right, so we have two different expressions for T. So we can set them equal to each other. We can group the like terms. So we just have 25 kilograms times A is equal to 49.05 newtons. And then if we just divide, I'm um, running out of space here, but we have A is going to be equal to, hmm, where should I write that? Okay, we can write it here. A is going to be equal to 49.05 newtons over 25 kilograms. 
So that is going to be equal to our acceleration, which is 1.962 meters per second squared. And this can be used for both the left-hand side and the right-hand side when it's going up and when it's going down conveniently because they have because they both match the positive direction of each scenario each movement of each block so yeah that's the acceleration uh, the other thing that we can find is tension tension was an unknown and we would like to know what it is so all we do is we sub acceleration back into each expression for tension which we had one here uh, 10 kilograms and another one here with the 15 kilograms so we have T is equal to 10 kilograms times acceleration, which was 1.962 meters per second squared, plus 98.1 newtons. When you simplify that, we find that tension is equal to 117.7 newtons. We can just cross-check with the other one too, just to make sure that we've done everything right. We have tension is equal to 147 0.15 newtons minus 100, no, minus 15 kilograms times acceleration, which is 1.962 meters per second squared. If you crunch all that conveniently, we're also going to find 117.7 newtons. So that is equal to T, and we can put a nice big box around that as our solution if we were asked to find the tension as well.